Hey, Hammy here. Uh, coming to you with part two of chapter 11 on cell communication and cell signaling, uh, in which we will talk about reception. Uh, so reception, remember there's three parts of cell communication. There's reception of the cell signal, uh, transduction of that signal, and then the cellular response. Uh, so in this video, we want to look at reception of the cell signal. How do the cells receive signals from other cells? When a cell receives a signal from another cell, usually that signal molecule, which we call a ligand, okay? A ligand is, a ligand is something that bonds to something else and is very highly specific, okay? So this is used in other areas of cell biology as well. In this case, we're going to uh, often refer to when a ligand uh, Caught, binds to a receptor, usually in the plasma membrane or cell membrane, and it's going to cause a change in shape. That binding of the ligand to the receptor protein is going to cause it to change shape and cause an activation of some kind. A lot of the signals that are used in cell communication are water soluble, uh, so they can dissolve and travel through the bloodstream. Uh, and also through the extracellular matrix, uh, the watery fluid outside the cells. And when those signal molecules bind to specific sites on receptors in the plasma membrane, uh, they will cause a response. There's three that we want to look at in this unit. Uh, they are the ion channel receptors, the G protein receptors, and the tyrosine kinase receptors. Uh, and so these are the three we want to look at this one first, and then we'll look at the tyrosine kinase, and then we'll look at the ion channel receptors. One of the largest families of receptors used in cell signaling is what we call G protein coupled receptors, or oftentimes in the future, I'll refer to them as GPCRs. Okay, GPCRs are uh, proteins that are embedded within the plasma membrane, and they work with the help of a G protein, which we'll look at their action here on the next slide. Uh, the G protein acts kind of an off switch uh, using GDP and GTP, which we'll talk about here in a second. Uh, but if we look at the actual GPCR, okay, this is, this would be the GPCR right here. So here's our plasma membrane, our uh, phospholipid bilayer. You often see that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven alpha helices or helices uh, that are embedded within the membrane. And then these folds, and you can see it's one continuous protein. And then these folds up here uh, will provide the binding site here on the outside of the cell. Okay, this would be the ligand. Okay, or the cell signaling molecule bind, would bind right here. And then on the inside, there's an area here that will interact with the G proteins uh, to turn the signal on or off. Uh, and this is a very typical structure of what a GPCR, and oftentimes we'll just label, label these GPCRs. Okay, let's talk about the action of the G protein coupled receptor. How does this work to receive signals? Uh, here you can see the GPCR is embedded within the cell membrane. And here's our cytoplasm. Outside here is our extracellular matrix. Uh, there's usually a, the G protein, which is bonded to GDP. Uh, very similar when we talked about ADP adenosine diphosphate and adenosine triphosphate, only instead of the A now we <clears throat> we have guanine, okay, guanine diphosphate, okay, and so when it's GDP is bound to the G protein, it is inactive, and this whole signaling mechanism is off, okay, notice there's an enzyme that'll come into play over here in a little bit. When step two, when the cell receives a signal, okay, here's a ligand, a hormone, or something like that, attaches to the 
here's the GPCR. Okay, when it binds to that, the G protein will slide over. Okay, this G protein is able to diffuse back and forth in the middle of those phospholipid tails in there in the plasma membrane. Uh, when it bonds uh, to the GPCR, GDP is going to be replaced by GTP. <clears throat> now notice oftentimes like we did with ATP as well, it's showing it kind of as a higher energy state with that little yellow star burst around it. Okay, now this has activated, this has activated the G protein. Okay, but notice over here, our enzyme is still inactive over here. So what happens in step three, step three is the G protein will slide across the plasma membrane. And when it has GTP attached to it, here's our G protein. Here's our enzyme, and here's our GPCR. Uh, when it has GTP attached to it, it will bind with the enzyme here, causing a shape change and causing it to activate or become active, okay? Which in turn can trigger something inside the cell, in here in the cytoplasm, and it will cause our cellular response. Okay, now this doesn't last forever because this G protein also acts as, so here's step four, here's our G protein, also acts as a GT pace. Okay, remember ACE means enzyme that breaks down GTP. Okay, so it's going to cause a hydrolysis. Okay, here's our enzyme. Okay, and here's our inorganic phosphate group. Now it's back to GDP, and the G protein is inactive again. Here's our GPCR, and notice that there is no signal. Uh, and so in this way, uh, once hydrolysis happens, uh, the G protein is now just has GDP, cannot bind to the enzyme, and so it shuts down the pathway, turns off the pathway. Uh, if the signal molecule is still in here, uh, it will come back and it will get GTP again, and it can be reactivated and it goes back to the enzyme, causes more response, back and forth and back and forth. As soon as that signal molecule leaves, okay, it can very quickly uh, shut down the signal or shut down, uh, we'll say, the response, okay? Scientists have found that GPCR-based signaling systems are extremely widespread in eukaryotes uh, and quite diverse in what they do. Uh, very important in embryonic development uh, when uh, the, the animal's first developing, uh, sensory reception, uh, taste, uh, smell, vision are all based on GPCR reception. Uh, and we found that malfunctions are involved in a lot of human diseases. Uh, bacterial infections are a big one uh, because they will release toxins that uh, mess up our G proteins or GPCRs. Uh, cholera, pertussis, or whooping cough, botulism are all main ones. Uh, down here, this is showing uh, cholera, where the cholera toxin, which is released by the bacteria, uh, comes in and into an epithelial cell in the intestine, and it messes up these G, these receptors, and it causes these chloride ions channels to open when they're not supposed to, and it causes a lot of loss of sodium and water, and it causes extreme... Uh, diarrhea. And that's how a lot of people die from the dehydration, the complications that come with, with uh, cholera. Uh, pertussis uh, works very much the same way. Uh, and so, you know, about 60% of all our medicines used today exert their effects by influencing G protein pathways. Because they are so common, 
uh, in many diseases or disorders, uh, a lot of medications uh, help cure that by influencing, by turning on or off certain signals in the cell. And that can be done with medication. Uh, and so this is one of the more common ones, very simple on off switch uh, that is used to influence uh, responses within cells.